Okay, so welcome to the uh, June meetup of the Data Science Milan community. Uh, I'm Gianmar and I'm, uh, if you don't know me, I'm uh, the founder and uh, the coordinator of the uh, meetup group. Today we're gonna talk about reinforcement learning, but before we start with the tech talk, uh, I'd like to give you a little bit of introduction to our community for those of you that are new to it. So we are an independent group. We're not powered by any company, uh, although we work with a lot of companies, a lot of partners, but we, we are an independent group. That was, uh, we started in February 2016. Uh, nowadays, it, it counts more than 1.6 thousand members. Uh, on, on, on the Meetup uh, official group. And we do, uh, we organize events every month, um, whether physically or online, like this one. The staff um, uh, is made of uh, the people you can see in this uh, picture. Um, we are nine people, um, but we always looking for um, volunteers, they would like to be part of the organization. Uh, in particular, um, we are looking for a social media manager at the moment that can help Marco Michelangeli with, uh, you know, extending the current uh, campaigns, uh, some, somebody that can help on, uh, help the community growing on social networks. So if you're interested, please um, talk with me or send an email to any of us. You can find all of the information on our website, datasciencemilan.org. Uh, in particular, you can, you can find also the link to the blog, uh, where every time we have an event, we have a, a, a web meetup or a physical event, then you, you will find uh, generally a week later, a few days later, you will find a summary of the event, so you can read about. If you missed the event, you can read about, with all of the links as well, uh, references. So. Please um, visit our uh, blog medium. Uh, for the next events, um, we are supposed to have uh, something about conversational AI, probably uh, September. And uh, there is another event that is coming up about uh, tools for managing the machine learning lifecycle by TensorWork. So um, stay tuned. Another service that we offer to our, all of our members is the monthly digest. We only send you an email once a month. Our uh, uh, curator, Ricardo, uh, he selects all of the most relevant articles, events going on, whether in Italy or Europe or anything that is relevant that we consider relevant for our community, we, uh, we put into this digest and we send every month. So if you have not subscribed yet, um, I strongly recommend you to do so. We also have a Slack channel that you can use for keeping in touch with other members, asking questions 24 hours a day. Um, could be technical questions about data science stuff, or it could be uh, anything that is about our community. And you can find um, not all of the members, but a good portion of them, you can find them on Slack. Uh, if you want to join our Slack channel, you can find the invitation link on our website, datasciencemilan.org. If you want to do a talk, then you can send your proposal. We tend to accommodate any proposal from everybody, any company or individual speakers. Don't be shy. We're always very happy to receive those uh, um, proposals. Um, let me share with you a little bit of uh, some uh, info some in updates about what's going on. Uh, if you don't know, we are part of the Italian Association for Machine Learning um, that supports us uh, in you know, making our events more visible uh, across the whole country. Uh, we also signed a deal for our community members with, um, for those of you that are based in Milan, uh, you, you can get 20% discount for all the tax uh, cons consulting services. You can find, again, all the information in the link on our website. There is a, an event that will be uh, tomorrow. 
that is about the uh, it's an, in Italian though uh, and it's about uh, understanding the role of the chief data officer in the current uh, world market and his responsibilities so if you want you can join this webinar we also would like to uh, recommend this summer school about artificial intelligence we will share the details in the in the newsletter so uh, join our digest and then um, this is uh, the job board from the companies in our network um, this is aerobics this is currently hiring for data scientists uh, they opening also offices in Milan so you can uh, guess you can go on the website and find more details about their job spec it's also helix sites the company where I work for is looking for uh, front-end developer uh, for this uh, AI power consumer insights platform and then there's also um, currently there is a uh, I I don't know if I spelled correctly IPTQ um, that is um, is looking for a data analyst. This is not in Milan, though. Uh, but our uh, member Claudio shared with us. Uh, so um, we, we, every, every time, I mean, every time we have something you would like to share with the rest of the community, you can just send your correspondence, and then we'll make sure to spread the, the word. Thank you very much. So uh, this is the agenda for today. We're gonna have this talk about reinforcement learning. Uh, before we start, uh, we need to uh, ask you a little bit of help on supporting us. How can you support us? Uh, you can help us on spreading the word. Uh, we, we're always looking for new members to join. We need visibility, so we need your help on uh, go on the social networks. You can find us in uh, Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn. This is our YouTube channel where we upload the recordings of the talks. Um, and um, we really appreciate if you could uh, you know, like our post and share. Thank you very much. Enjoy. Marco, your turn. Should you're muted. Here I am, just a second that I'm presenting. Uh, before we start, um, Marco, how would you like to manage the uh, question and answers? Would you like to do like last time at the end of the talk, or would you like to put you right on the chat during the talk? I, I think better uh, at the end of the talk. At the end, okay. I think it's better. Just a second that I'm controlling the presentation. Everybody want to ask questions, you can write in the chat in uh, Google Meet and then Marco you will uh, read through at the end of the book, okay? I'll okay. try not to facilitate much, I think it's, uh, it's better if you facilitate directly as well. Sorry, I didn't understand. Okay, I can start. Okay, do you hear me? Yes. Okay, perfect. So, hi everybody. My name is Marco Del Pra. I am 41 years old and I live in Milan. I work in artificial intelligence since 10 years and among others, I work for Microsoft and for Cubic. And today I will give you an overview of reinforcement learning. Uh, reinforcement learning is a growing subset of machine learning and one of the most important frontiers of artificial intelligence since uh, it has gained great popularity in the last years with a series of successful real-world applications in robotics, games and many other fields. It denotes a set of algorithms uh, that deal with sequential decision making and have the potential capability to make intelligent decisions depending on their local environment. A reinforcement learning algorithm can describe uh, a model that's, that can be described as a model that tells an agent which set of action it should be take within a closed environment in order to maximize a predefined overall net, uh, reward. 
generally speaking, the agent tries different set of actions, evaluating the total obtainable return. Uh, after many trials, uh, the algorithm learns uh, which actions give a greater reward and establish a pattern of behavior. Thanks to this, it is able to tell the agent which action to take in every situation. The goal of reinforcement learning is to capture higher logic and more and uh, and to use uh, more adaptable uh, more adaptable algorithms than classical machine learning. In fact, uh, reinforcement learning algorithms are more dynamic in the behavior compared to traditional machine learning. As already mentioned, in the last years, reinforcement learning was applied uh, with the great success in many different fields. Uh, let's see some examples. In robotics, uh, reinforcement learning can be used for high dimensional control problems as well as various industrial applications. In text mining, uh, reinforcement learning, uh, along with the text degeneration model, can be used to develop a system that is able to produce highly readable summaries of long text. In trade execution, major companies in the financial industry have been using machine learning algorithms to improve their trading strategy. Reinforcement learning is also used uh, uh, in healthcare uh, for medical dosing and for the optimization or treatment for people that are suffering for chronic uh, uh, clinical trials. And then, of course, in games, uh, reinforcement learning is well known because it is the mainstream algorithm used to solve different games and sometimes also to achieve superhuman performances. <coughs> Reinforcement learning algorithms are based on Markov decision process that is a special stochastic time control process for decision making. Uh, now we see the main actors of reinforcement learning. The agent that is an entity which performs actions in an environment in order to optimize a long time reward. The environment that is the scenario in which the agent takes decisions. The set of states, that is the set of all the possible states of the environment, where the state describes the current uh, situation of the environment. The set of action A, that is the set of all the possible action that can be performed by the agent. The state transition model that describes the probability that the environment state, uh, state changes in S prime when the agent performs the action A at state S for every state S and S prime and every action A. And then the reward uh, that is a function that indicates the immediate uh, real valued reward for taking uh, action A at state S. Then there is, here we are, <coughs> sorry, there, um, the episode or rollout. That is a sequence of state ST and action AT, 40 that varies for, from zero to the final value that is called horizon and can be eventually infinite. The agent starts in a given state of its environment and each time step, uh, uh, the agent uh, uh, observes the current state and consequently, consequently takes uh, an action A. The state, uh, after this, uh, uh, there are three consequences, as you see also uh, in the image. The state evolves into a new state, uh, ST plus one, that depends only on the state ST and the action AT according to the state transition model. The agent ob obtains a reward, a reward uh, RT, and the agent observes a new state, ST plus one. Then another actor is the policy function. A policy function can be deterministic or stochastic. A deterministic policy function indicates uh, the action A performed by the agent when the environment is a state S and we write A equal to P of S. The stochastic policy P of A and S is a function that describes the probability that the action A is performed by the agent when the environment is in state S. Once the, the, the policy is specified, the agent behaves like a Markov chain, uh, in or, uh, and the, the new state depends only on the policy and on the transition model.
Then there is another actor that is the return G, the total long-term reward with discount obtained at the end of the episode, according to the immediate reward of the current step and of every following 10 step. Uh, we see here the equation, uh, and uh, in the equation, the discount factor gamma that controls the importance of the future rewards is a positive real number that is smaller than one or equal to one, usually smaller. Uh, <clears throat> then there is the value function that is the expected long-term return at the end of, it, of the episode, starting from the state S at current time step T. And then the Q value or action value function that is the expected long-term return at the end of the episode, starting from the state S at current time step, like in the value function, but also performing the action A. <coughs> then the other, another important actor is the Bellman equation. That is, that is the, the theoretical core of most reinforcement learning algorithms. According to it, uh, the current value function is equal to the current reward plus, it, plus itself, itself evaluated in, at the next step uh, and discounted by gamma. You can see here the equation and also uh, it can be expressed using the Q value. And we record the P is the transaction model. Uh, <clears throat> the maximum of the action value function as the policy changes is referred as the optimal action value function Q star. And according to Bellman equation, it is given by this, the, the following uh, expression and uh, that you see here. And so that the, power, the optimal policy is given by the action that maximizes the action value function. You can see here, so this in the second equation. The problem is that in most of the real cases, the state transition model and the reward function of the model are unknown. So we need to learn them from sampling in order to estimate the optimal action and the best, uh, the optimal action value function and the best uh, policy. For these reasons, uh, uh, the, uh, reinforcement learning uh, uh, algorithms are used in order to take the action in the environment, observe and learn dynamics of the model, estimate the optimal, value uh, the optimal value function and the optimal policy, and to improve the rewards. Uh, moreover, it's important also to talk about the exploration exploitation dilemma. Exploration is training on the new data points. Exploitation is the use of the previously captured data. If we keep searching for the best action in every situation, we might remain stopped in a few states without being able to explore all the entire environment. And to get out of this suboptimal space, generally it's used a strategy called epsilon greedy. When we select the best action, there is a more uh, probability epsilon that we might get a random action. <coughs> and we see here also the expression of this. There are three main possible approaches that we can use when we implement a, a, a reinforcement learning algorithm. The value-based method, that is an algorithm that computes the optimal value function or the optimal action value function by continuously improving the estimate. Usually, the, the, the value function or the action value function are initialized randomly, then they are continuously updated until they converge. Here, the main focus is to find the optimal value function or the optimal action value function. A value-based uh, algorithm is guaranteed to converge to the optimal values. Then there is the policy-based method. A policy-based algorithm looks for a policy such that the action performed at each state is optimal to gain the maximum reward in the future. Hence, uh, the main focus is to find the optimal policy. Uh, it redefines uh, the policy at each step and computes uh, the value function according to this new policy until the policy converts. Uh, the policy-based uh, policy method is also guaranteed to converge. Uh, 
and often takes less iteration to converge than the value-based algorithms. Then there are third, the, 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 the model-based methods. A model-based algorithm learns a virtual model starting from the original environment, and the agent learns how to perform in the virtual model. Uh, this model uses to reduce the number of interaction with the, uh, the, the, with the real environment during the learning phase. Uh, then it builds a new model based on, the, on these interactions and uses this model to simulate the further episodes and get the results returned by the virtual model. So let's see in details the value-based algorithms. And we start with the value function approximation. The goal of this algorithm is to estimate the optimal policy P star by iteratively approximating the optimal action value function Q star. We start considering a parametric action value function Q hat of the state S of the action A and of a vector of parameters W. Uh, we initialize randomly the vector w and we iterate on every step on every episode. For every iteration, given the state s and the action a, we observe the reward and the new state s prime. According to the obtained reward, we update the parameter using the gradient descent. And here is the, the, the formula of the update of the, of the, of the weights and uh, alpha is the learning rate. That usually is a, a real number uh, that is uh, smaller than one. Usually something like around 0 0.1. It can be shown that the, the process converts and uh, the obtained action value function is our approximation of the optimal value function. Uh, in most of the real cases, the better choice for the parametric action value Q, uh, Q hat is a neural network where clearly the vector of parameter W is the vector of weight. Here we see the algorithm that we just described more in detail. There is an, uh, uh, the input is a, a differentiable uh, action value parameters function Q hat. The algorithm set the parameters, the learning rate, and eventually the, the epsilon uh, for uh, epsilon greedy strategy. It, uh, the, the algorithm initializes the, the, the function weights W, then loop on each, on each episode, and the initial state and, uh, uh, and the initial action of the episode are set. And then we loop over all the steps of the episode. We take action A and we set the reward R uh, and the new state as prime. If the state as prime is terminal, we update the weights and then we go to the next episode. Uh, then, if the new state is not terminal, we choose the new action as the action that maximizes the, parameter, the parametric action value function. And then we update uh the vector parameters w and the new state and the new action become the actual state and the actual action an improvement of the uh value function approximation is the deep q network that is a combination of deep learning and reinforcement learning <coughs> Since uh, uh, the, parametric action, uh, the parametric action value function Q hat is a deep neural network, and in particular, usually is a, con uh, is a convolutional neural network. Uh, moreover, uh, deep Q network uh, overcomes uh, unstable learning using mainly two techniques that are the target network and the experience reply. The target network. Uh, uh, in the target network, uh, mm, uh, we have to say that the model updates without the target network, the model updates uh, um, uh, could be very unstable since the real target changes each time the model updates itself. So the solution is to create uh, a target network, which is a copy of the training model that is updated less frequently. For example, every thousand step, we indicate as uh, W prime the weights of the target network. 
In every model, uh, in every model update uh, with the gradient descent uh, that we have seen uh, in, the, in, the, in the previous uh, algorithm, the target network is used as target in place of the model itself. So as you can see here, we use the, the Q hat of W prime in the target, uh, in place of the target. Then the experience reply. In the algorithm that uh, we have seen, uh, several consecu consecutive updates are performed using data from the same episode, and this can cause overfitting. To show this, it is created uh, an experience buffer reply, uh, an experience reply buffer, sorry, uh, that stores uh, the four tuples, state, action, reward, new state, of all the different episodes, and randomly select one uh, a batch of tuples each time the model is updated. This solution has three advantages. Reduces overfitting, increase the learning speed using the mini batches, and reuse the past tuples, avoiding forgetting. Another evolution of uh, the uh, value-based method is uh, the fit and Q learning, the fit and Q iteration. That is uh, very popular. Consider the deterministic case in which uh, we have that the state S prime is uniquely defined, determined by a state S and by the, uh, the action A, according to, this, to some function F. Let L be the horizon possibly infinite, and we recall that the horizon is the length of all the episodes. Uh, the goal of this algorithm is to estimate the optimal uh, action value function. As we already have seen, by the Bellman equation, the optimal action value function referred at Q star is given by the application, the application of this operator H to the action value function Q. We can see here it's the same equation that we reported uh, before, with the difference that here uh, there is the, the function f instead of uh, uh, the probabilities p, the transition model, because here we are, we are in a deterministic, state, deterministic case. Now, consider now uh, the, the, the temporal horizon n less or equal, or less or equal to uh, uh, the horizon l and denote by Qn the action value function over n steps defined by the application of the just defined operator H to the action value function Qn minus one with the Q0 equal to zero. We, we see here in the expression in the equation. So here we have a sequence of n step action value functions and it is possible to show that this sequence converge and, uh, uh, and this sequence also uh, converts to the optimal value function as n goes to the horizon L. Thanks to this, it's possible to, be, to build an algorithm that uh, uh, approximates the optimal action value function Q star iterating on n. Uh, here we see the algorithm in details. First of all, we consider uh, a set of observations that are represented by a set of four tuples, state, action, new state, uh, and reward. After the initialization, the algorithm iterates on n, and for each n, computes the approximation of the n-step action value function qn, denoted by q hat n. At each time step, the algorithm uses the full set of, ta of four tuples together with the action value function computed at the previous time step to determine the new training set and the corresponding target vector. As you can see, the training set is composed by the couple state action of the four tuples, and the target is computed using the reward RT and the new state ST plus one of the four tuple and the action value function Q uh, hat N minus one. This uh, expression represents the uh, approximated long-term reward with discount. The training set is used by a supervised learning method that to approximate the, the action value function. For example, a random forest, an extra tier, or also a, a, a neural network. The, the algorithm produces a sequence of n-step action value function q hat n 
that approximate uh, the true n step value functions for n that is uh, equal or uh, or less than l. Uh, letting n go to the horizon l, we get the approximated optimal uh, the approximated optimal action value function. We can see now an example of this application of uh, of the application of the fitted Q learning, fitted Q iteration. Consider a car modeled by a point mass that is traveling on a hill with this form. The curve is the form of the hill. The control pro the control problem goal is to bring the car in a minimum time to the top of the hill while preventing the position p uh, of the car to become smaller than minus one and uh, to prevent also the, its speed v to go outside the interval the interval minus three three uh, the top of the hill is reached at position p equal to one the state space of, of this problem uh, is a continuous state space of dimension two uh, the position p and the speed v of the car and we want that the absolute value of the position is less or equal to one uh, and that the absolute value of the speed is less or equal to 3, as we can see in this expression. Uh, every other combination of position and speed is considered a terminal state. Uh, <clears throat> the action space, the action space uh, uh, is, uh, is such that the action A acts, acts directly on the acceleration of the car and can only assume extreme values full acceleration a equal to four or full deceleration a equals to minus four. Hence, the action space is given by the set a equal to minus four, four. Now, the system dynamics. The time is discretized in time step of 0 0.1 seconds. And given the state, position, speed, and the action, that is the acceleration at time step t, we are able to compute the state, position, speed at time step t plus 1, solving with a numeric method the, numer the two differential equations that are related to position and speed that describe the dynamic of the system. Of course, it's not important for our purpose that you understand this equation now, but it's important to underline that given the state state and the action at time step t, the state at time step t plus 1 is uniquely, is uniquely determ determined by these equations. Uh, the reward fun function, the reward function is given, uh, given to this expression. Uh, the reward is minus 1 if the position is less than minus 1, or if the absolute value of the speed is greater than 3, because we reached the determination state, but we didn't reach the top of the hill. The reward, is, the reward is one if the position is greater than one and the absolute value of the speed is less than three. Because in this case, we reach the, the top of the hill respecting the speed limits. Otherwise, the reward is zero. The discount factor is uh, gamma has been chosen uh, uh, as 0 .0 uh, 0.95. The initial point uh, is the car stopped at the bottom of the hill so p equal to minus 0 0.5 and uh, v, the speed, equal to 0. The regressor that you was used is the next three regressor. And now we see a little bit of results. The fit iteration was performed from n equal to 1 to 50. For n greater than 20, the mean squared error between the, L, the action value function qn and the action value function qn plus 1 computed on all the combination of the speed and position, and decreases quickly to zero as n increase. Hence, the results were studied using the action state, uh, the action state function Q uh, hat 20. In the figure on the left, in the figure on the left, we can see the action chosen for every combination of position speed according to the action value Q hat 20. Black bullets are uh, represent the deceleration, white bullets represent the acceleration, and gray bullets means that the action value for deceleration and acceleration are equal. And on the right, we see a figure with the optimal trajectory according to the action value function q hat 20. 
and you can find a full implementation of this on, uh, on GitHub. Now, let's see, let's speak about the policy-based methods. And we start with the policy gradient. The goal of the policy gradient method is uh, to find the vector parameter uh, theta that maximize the value function V under a parametric policy P. We start considering a parametric policy P differentiable with respect to the vector of parameters theta. In particular, uh, in this case, we choose a stochastic policy, and hence the method is called stochastic policy gradient. However, uh, the case with the deterministic policy is very similar. We initialize randomly the vector W, uh, and we iterate on every episode. For each time step, we generate a sequence of triplets, state, action, reward, choosing the action according to the parametric policy P. Then, for every time step in the resulting sequence, we compute the total long-term reward with discount G in function of the obtained rewards, as we can see here. Then the, the vector of our theta is modified using a, a gradient upgrade process. We can see here the, uh, the process, the, the formula. And uh, uh, also here, alpha is the learning rate. And uh, it can be shown that uh, this process converge. And the obtained process is our, uh, uh, sorry, the obtained policy, of course, uh, is our uh, approximated policy, our optimal policy. Here we can see in details uh, the policy gradient reinforced algorithm that we just described. As you can see, after the initialization, it iterates over all the episodes. For each episode, it computes the sequence of triplets, state, action, reward. For each time step, it computes the total long-term reward with discount GT, and then uses the total long-term reward with discount and the, uh, and, the, um, and the gradient update process to update the vector of the parameters theta. Uh, here we see some example of uh, base parametric policy. Uh, the soft the soft max policy uh, consists of the soft the, of the soft uh, soft max function that of course all of us know, uh, and that converts uh, the output to a distribution of probabilities. And uh, this policy is mostly used in the case of in case of discrete actions. Uh, you, here we can see the, the well-known formula of the softmax function. And also we can uh, have the explicit, for, uh, the explicit formula for the gradient update, uh, where phi is the future, uh, phi of S and A is the future vector related uh, to the state and the action. Uh, on the contrary, the Gaussian policy, policy is used in case of continuous action spaces, and this is given by the Gaussian function, also here, also here, very well known uh, formula, where phi also here is the again the future vector, and mu is given by uh, phi uh, the, um, scalar theta, and sigma can be fixed or parametric. Also, in this case, we have the explicit formula for the gradient update. Those are the most used uh, parametric policy for, uh, stochast uh, for stochastic policy gradient. Then, which are the advantages, the, the, the disadvantages of policy gradient with respect to the, with the, with the, with the uh, value-based methods and also to other methods? A policy gradient method is a simpler process compared with the value-based methods. Uh, it allows uh, the action to be continuous with respect to the state. It is usually it usually has better conv conversion, uh, conv convergence properties with respect to the other methods. It avoids the growth in the usage of memory and in the computation time when the action and the state sets are large, 
because the goal of, is to learn a set of, uh, of parameters whose size is much smaller than the size of the state of the set of the states and of the set of the actions. It, it, uh, a policy gradient method can also learn uh, stochastic policies, as we have seen. And it also allows the use of epsilon greedy method so that the agent can have a probability of taking random actions. The disadvantages are that the policy gradient method typically converts to a local rather than a global optimum. And also, also that it has high variance, but uh, as, also we, uh, as we will see, uh, there are some techniques to deduce this variance. That's an example also of the policy gradient, uh, of the policy gradient. The card poll. Card poll is a game where a pole is attached to an annotated joint, uh, to a card, uh, which, is, which moves along a frictionless track. We can see here the image of the pole, the joint, and the card, and the pole starts upright. The goal is to prevent the pole for, from, for, from falling by increasing and reducing the cart's velocity. So the state space uh, is uh, made of four elements, car position, car velocity, pole, uh, pole angle, and pole angular velocity. So uh, we have uh, a dimension that is four. And the game ends when the pole falls, uh, which is when the pole, the pole angle is more than uh, 12 degrees plus or minus 12 degrees or when the char the car position uh, reaches uh, the edge of the display the action space has only two actions move the pole to the left move the pole to the right and the reward uh, is uh, is uh, given by uh, the increment of one for every step taken this is clearly because we want to achieve the greatest possible number of steps The problem is solved uh, with the gradient uh, policy using the softmax uh, policy uh, with discount factor gamma uh, equal to 0 0.95 and learning rate alpha equal to 0 0.1. Uh, for every episode, the a maximum number of 1,000 iteration is fixed. And you can uh, find the full implementation of this on GitHub. Uh, after 60 epochs, uh, where one epoch is uh, equal to 20 consecutive episodes, the agent learns a policy thanks to which we get a reward of 1,000. That means that the poll doesn't fall for all the 1,000 steps of the episode. In this, uh, in this chart, for example, we can see uh, uh, how the probability to choose move left action, red points, or move right action, yellow points vary in function of the pole angle and of the car velocity in the left figure and in function of the pole angular velocity and the car velocity in the right figure. But the most interesting chart is this. This is very interesting because we see how the average reward per epoch evolves in function of the total number of epochs for different values of the discount gamma. It's evident that if gamma is lower than 0 0.9, uh, the reward doesn't grow with the number of epochs. See the blue line that doesn't arrive to 1000. Uh, and this means uh, that uh, this policy, um, for this problem, the reward uh, of the next steps is very important to find the best policy. And actually, this is, this is reasonable, of course, because given that, uh, that the fundamental information to learn how to prevent the pole from falling is to know after how many steps it falls each episode, in each episode. Now we speak about another policy-based method, that is the actor critic. It is different from the policy gradient method because it estimates both the policy and the value function and updates both. Uh, in policy gradient, the vector of parameter theta is updated using the long-term reward G, but this estimation often has high variance. 
to address this, this issue uh, and also to reduce the wide the changes in the results, uh, the idea of the Hector Critics method is to subtract from the total reward with discount G a baseline B. The obtained value delta that is called the temporal difference error is used to, ob to update the vector of parameters theta in place of the long-term reward G. The baseline can take several forms, but the most used uh, is the estimation of the value function V. Uh, as in the value-based methods, the uh, value function V can be learned uh, with a neural network, whose output is the approximated value function V hat, where, uh, where W is the vector of weights. Then, in every iteration, the temporal difference error delta is used not only to adjust the vector of parameters theta, but also to update the vector of weights W. And this is why it's called action critic, because the critic estimates the value, the value function V, and the actor updates, updates the policy distribution uh, in the direction suggested by the critic, as we have seen in the policy gradient, the gradient methods. So here we see in the tense the actor critic algorithm. After the initialization, the parameters uh, of the parameters, uh, there is a first loop in the old episodes, and a loop uh, on all the steps of every episode, like in policy gradient algorithm. We can see that here the temporal difference delta is computed in place of the total long-term reward G. And uh, uh, this is done using the actual values of theta and w. Then uh, the values of theta and w are updated uh, using the gradient descent. And then the new state s prime becomes the actual, the actual state s. So it's very similar to the policy gradient, but we add the estimation of the uh, value function. At the end, we'll speak about <coughs> model-based methods. We recall that the model-based method uh, creates a virtual, model start, uh, a virtual model starting from the original environment. And that, uh, the agent learns how to perform that in the virtual model. Uh, a model-based uh, model method starts considering a base parametric model and then run the following three steps. The acting, uh, in which the uh, base policy P is used to select the action to perform in the real environment in order to collect a set of observation given by the triplet state action new state. Then there is the model learning. From the collected experience, a new model F is deduced in order to minimize the less square error between the model's new state and the real new state. A supervised learning algorithm can be used to train a model to minimize the less square error from the sampled trajectory. Then there is the planning. Uh, the value function and the policy are updated according to the new model uh, in order to be used to select the action to perform in the real environment in the next iteration. Um, the, about the most used models, uh, one of the most used is the, to represent the system dynamics is the Gaussian process, in which, as many of you know, uh, the prediction interpolates the observation using uh, a Gaussian distribution. Another possibility is to use the Gaussian mixture model, that is a probabilistic model that assumes all the data that assumes that all the data that are generated, uh, sorry, sorry, that, that assumes that all the data that are uh, generated from a mixture of finite number of Gaussian distribution with unknown parameters. It's a sort of generalization of k-means clustering that incorporates information about the covariance structure of the data as well as the center of the latent Gaussians.
Now, the model predictive control is an evolution the, of the method that we just described. Uh, the described model-based algorithm is vulnerable to drifting since tiny errors uh, accumulate fast along the trajectory and uh, the search space is too big for uh, any base policy to cover fully. For this reason, the trajectory may land in areas where the model has not been learned yet. Without a proper model around this area, it's impossible uh, to plan uh, the optimal control. To address that, instead of learning the, uh, the model at the beginning, sampling and fitting of the model are performed continuously during the trajectory. Um, nevertheless, uh, the previous method executes all planned action before fitting the model again. Uh, in model predictive control, the whole trajectory is optimized, but only the first action is performed. Then the new triplet, S, A, S prime, is added to the observations, and then the planning is done again. This allows to take a corrective action if the current state is observed again. And this for stochastic model, uh, for a stochastic model, is very, very helpful. Uh, by constantly changing the plan, the model predictive control is less vulnerable to the uh, problems uh, in the model. Uh, these algorithms uh, uh, run five steps. The first three are the same of the previous algorithm, the acting, the modeling, and the planning. Then we have the execution, uh, in which the first planned action is performed. Then the resulting state S prime is observed. Then the data set update. The new triplet is appended to the data set. And then we go to step three. But every n times, we go to step two. As already seen, this means that the planning is performed at every step, while the model is fitted every n steps of the trajectory. Now we are ready to see more in details the algorithm that uses the sample data and the model to fit the action value function that is called the DynaQ algorithm. The algorithm starts by initializing the action value function at the model, uh, then enters in the main loop. It starts uh, at the current state, selects, uh, selects an action according to the policy, executes the action in the real environment, observes the reward, and uh, the new state as prime. With these values, it updates the action value function Q and the model. Then as prime becomes become the current state. And here, the algorithm they begin the planning phase, entering in a second loop, with, uh, which iterates n times. Inside this loop, the algorithm randomly selects a state and an associated action, apply them to the model, gets the reward and the new state from the model, and finally updates the action value function uh, as in an outer loop. You can see here in, uh, at the end. So model-based reinforcement learning uh, has a strong advantage to uh, being sample efficient. Many models behave linearly, at least in the local proximity. This requires very few samples to learn them. Uh, once the model and the reward function are known, we can plan the optimal controls without further sampling. That this is very important. Then also uh, we can say that generally the uh, the, the learning phase is fast, since there is no need to wait for the environment to respond, nor to reset the environment to some state in order to resume learning. On the downside, if the model is inaccurate, we risk learning sometime, something, that, something that is completely different from the reality. Another point worth noting is that model-based algorithms still use model-free methods either to construct the model or in the planning and simulation phases. So we are going to conclude. We had a high level structural overview 
of many classical and popular enforcement learning uh, algorithms. However, it's worthwhile to mention that there are a lot of variants in each model family that we are not covered. For example, in the deep Q networks family, there is the dueling deep Q networks and the double deep Q, net deep Q networks. The main challenge in reinforcement learning lays in preparing the simulation environment, which is highly dependent on the task to be performed. In fact, many real world problems have enormous state and action spaces, and for these reasons, the use of parametric function is needed. As we have seen, some methods learn a parametric action value function, some other learn a parametric policy, some other learn both, and some others uh, learn a parametric model. Uh, one, uh, one of the main tasks of, of all these methods is to optimize the rewards and the penalties in order to obtain the desired results. Uh, another, another challenge is to set up uh, uh, the system in order to let the learning process converge to the local or global optimum in a reasonable time, avoiding bias and overfitting. And last but not least, it's important to avoid for, uh, forgetting uh, when acquiring new observation. And this is usually done by letting the system use also all the observation when the updating is uh, when updating the system. And I'm done. So thank you, Marco. Uh, if uh, any of you have any question for uh, Marco. From my side, I would like to ask, uh, what are some real-world uh, applications of uh, this uh, algorithm? OK. But there are a lot of uh, uh, real-world applications. For example, uh, as I told at the beginning, uh, for example, one of the main applications is uh, in um, the finance uh, environment, uh, both for trading, but also for, for option edging. Um, <coughs> sorry. <coughs> uh, in option edging, uh, usually uh, works with the fit Q iteration, works uh, very well uh, with the fit Q iteration. Uh, I personally made a uh, a project of uh, in which I used uh, uh, the fit and fit iteration for uh, for option edging, and I th that is to say that this is one of the more most important application uh, because uh, uh, just to tell you uh, in the project in the project that I that I developed we considered uh, an European call option which fixed strike price and time to maturity, and uh, we build a model that learn uh, to hedge this option. Uh, that means that the, the, the model that told you every day, uh, if uh, buy X stocks, sell X stocks, or do nothing. And uh, the results was uh, very, very good, because, uh, uh, for example, in the, in the um, uh, in the real environment, it, usually when you work when you uh, work in finance uh, in the option edging, you use uh, uh, some models that are the uh, Heston model and the Black and Scholes model that are models that make some assumptions. But of course, re in reality, some of these assumptions are not true, and so using a machine learning uh, algorithm that is trained on the uh, on the real data uh, gives the model that uh, uh, that achieve really good results. 
this is one of the application but uh, as i told uh, at the beginning uh, in uh, in games uh, uh, for example also when you uh, when you play when when you have to develop uh, a, a a, a software that plays a game, for example, that plays chess, uh, the Fitaculor, the Fitaculor, but also the, the um, all the reinforcement learning applications, the reinforcement learning methods are are really useful. And in fact, in a lot of games now, uh, reinforcement learning is applied uh, in order to uh, to to get uh, superhuman performances. Uh, for example, the chess is a very good example because if you think uh, in the chess, uh, you have uh, a really big uh, possible, a, number, a very big number of possibilities of possible moves in the future. When when you have to take the the next move, if you want to analyze all the possible moves in the future, you really need a, 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 an infinite time. And this is a really a situation in which the, the state space is big, big, and big. And uh, using reinforcement learning, uh, uh, for example, using a value-based method uh, in, in developing a software uh, that uh, plays chess, you uh make a very intelligent reduction of the state spaces that can give you a very good result in a really uh, few time in a really slowest time smaller time and then of course as, as i told at the beginning there are really a lot of application in robotics for example uh when a when a robot must uh, move uh, in a uh, in a in an environment in which it has to, um, uh, in which there are some uh, some uh, some obstacles that uh, he, it has to to avoid, uh, it is the reinforcement learning is is really helpful. Uh, usually, uh, with the in the robotics, uh, you use uh, the model-based algorithm because you give a model that uh, that somehow describes uh, to the to the robot how to move uh, when there is an obstacle but uh, uh, then uh, using also the reinforcement learning to uh, to improve the parametric model you get really uh, really really good results uh, especially if uh, for example you move uh, in a in a in an environment where the obstacles uh, uh, move, if you have some fixed obstacles, uh, uh, also using a model uh, with few, uh, with really few, with really um, uh, with the learning that is on really few observation, you can achieve good results. If the obstacles move you need uh, a very high uh, number of observations, but uh, uh, you can achieve very good results that you can't achieve uh, without using uh, machine learning, uh, um, reinforcement learning. Okay, thank you very much. I see there are uh, some other questions in the chat. Okay. So, FITEQ learning and FITEQ iteration are the same. Yes, it's a FITEQ iteration is an algorithm of FITEQ learning. So it's not exactly the same. But uh, one uh, usually they uh, usually they mean the same thing. And the future of reinforcement learning is is uh, 
is that probably it will be uh, applied to a lot of uh, a lot of uh, fields. I think that for for what I know, uh, it gave very very good results in every field it was applied. So I think that it will be applied. Uh, uh, much more in the future. I think that here, for example, in, in I see in Italy, uh, it's not much used. It's not mal, uh, It's not much well known. But uh, I think that uh, uh, in all the the uh, in all the, the environments that I described, uh, it will be for sure uh, uh, applied. And if uh, I have to bet something. I, I would say that uh, the main result, we will have the main results uh, in, uh, in finance, in robotics and in games, as I told before. Also in healthcare can be good, but uh, I think that, for example, uh, in healthcare, you get the, my, the best result for machine learning, for deep neural networks, for uh, deep learning. But uh, probably uh, the, uh, the application of uh, uh, reinforcement learning are mm, less, uh, uh, how can I say, uh, I see less uh, application uh, than in another, than in other uh, environments, but uh, it's only one, one my opinion. Um, also in text mining, uh, as I told before, I think that the future is to try to the application of of these uh, of these uh, of these algorithms to to much more uh, uh, to much more fields. And the best environment, as I told you, is the, the thing that I already told. Uh, I mean, uh, if, the, if I understand the question, the best environment, uh, I already told this in, uh, in finance, and in my opinion, in finance, robotics and games, uh, up to now, it's, it's, the, it's the winning algorithm. Uh, Marco, I think that uh, the the meaning of the question was about uh, software uh, development. Ah, sorry, sorry. Ah, software development. Sorry, sorry. Um, uh, I think that uh, for what I saw, um, I found a lot of uh, implementation on GitHub. There are a lot of implementation. I use also use a few of them, but. Uh, of course, using Python uh, and uh, and uh, uh, the um, uh, there are a lot of good uh, um, libraries that are not uh, in the in the uh, how can you say that are not in the standard. For example, in Scikit-Learn or uh, something like that, that are not standard but that are really useful because uh, uh, for what I see, only few. Uh, Things about the reinforcement learning is uh, uh, is developed uh, in um, in Scikit-Learn and in the main used libraries. But there are a lot of libraries for every for every um, for every um, approach uh, that you can download and that works well. That are uh, uh, that are on GitHub, so they are open source. They are continuously updated, so. Uh, I, I will also I will give the the presentation and I will put the references uh, in the in the presentation that I will give to after the talk. Now uh, will be published on the on the site, so I will give you all the. Uh, but of course, uh, usually in Python, uh, for what I see, for what I see, uh, the main implementation are uh, are libraries for Python. Okay, I see also that uh, 
has been asked uh, what uh, technical infrastructure that have you used in uh, in your development uh, i already uh, answered it because uh, i i worked with uh, um, with uh, some already developed uh, uh, libraries and i worked uh, uh, on python uh, for example, in the in the project that I told before before about uh, the financial and the option edging, uh, I worked with Python. Um, of course, uh, uh, it would be it would be very nice that uh, in a, in a, in in the next uh, period that there will be a. A library for reinforcement learning that is a standard like like it is scikit-learn or scipi and so on for machine learning uh, at, at now it's not uh, it's not the uh, it's not uh, it's not possible to have a it's, there is not a, but i think that the, the idea of, is that uh, in a few time uh, we will have a standard library also for reinforcement learning for all the for all the uh, approaches of reinforcement learning because we, you find different totally different uh, uh, libraries for different approaches Okay, I think uh, we are done. Thank you very much, Marco. Thank you. Time. Thank you all. And uh, have a nice evening. Also to you. Bye. Bye, guys. Thank you. Bye-bye.